Hi everybody, this is author PK Anderson and uh, this is my podcast, I Put the Carny in Carnivore. So first off, I want to say I've actually influenced one of my coworkers to start doing um, Carnivore. He's been on it for about four weeks or three weeks, three to four weeks, and he was able to successfully go on a cruise eating on Carnivore. And of course, like all guys, he loses weight super fast, so he's already down 20 pounds. Where I am in my weight loss is holding steady right at 27 pounds lost. So I haven't made it to 30 pounds, and it's been a couple weeks, but as you know from a previous podcast, I did get sick, where I was just living on basically some cracker packets and soup or broth when I could keep it down. And then coming out of that, I had like some real food aversions that were really, I was really struggling with. So I'm kind of, mm, I'm kind of like skating the edge of not quite being clean enough carnivore, but I'm just letting myself sort of exist in this space right now until I just get, I'm focused on, um, for my work life, I am sitting for a huge test in five days. And so I'm actually off work today. I'm procrastinating. I have to start my math modules for my test. And math is my weakest subject, I'm not gonna lie. Even though I was in advanced math in high school and college, but it's been so long, it's just like really hard for me to train myself to use a specific calculator and all of that stuff. So <laughs> I digress, but anyway, so I'm taking a moment to procrastinate and do an episode of carnivore, or I put the carny in carnivore. So I've been holding steady at the 27 pound weight loss since starting this way of eating. Um, I was thinking I was gonna schedule myself for some blood work, but I think I'm gonna go another month out before I start doing that. And I've been seeing some crazy stuff. There's some other carnivore pages that I belong to on Facebook. So I just wanna point out that um, if you're out there searching for people to tell you what to do for your diet, I have just a philosophy that I search I look at like multiple sources all on the same topic before I form an opinion of what I'm going to try. I'm kind of leery of going to my doctor and talking about it. So I, I want to get more than 30 pounds lost before I go in because I'm expecting that my cholesterol is not going to be much improved. Just because it seems like everybody's run a little higher on the carnivore diet. Now, I have been seeing things where people are asking or they're talking about how they're at a point where they're not having a weight loss and um, they're encouraging those people to go to the OMAD or the one a day diet and as I've stated I'm too mad two meals a day unless I'm feeling hungry. I thought today for sure because I'm studying that I was going to want to eat like a breakfast before I started but so far I could only put coffee in my stomach. I wasn't up to it. So my plan is I'm going to make sure to eat breakfast or lunch I guess it would be right around 11 o'clock and it's about 10 o'clock now. I'm not hungry yet but I feel like I need to have just those calories in me because I'm going to be, I want to be able to focus on the content. Because as I say, math, not good for me. Anyway, but those people are asking people that are just beginning in the carnivore diet to start already going to one mat or encouraging them to. And that isn't required for people on the carnivore diet. So I just want to point that out that you should be listening to what your body is telling you. That's what I think. And I am not a physician. I'm not a dietitian. I am not a medical professional in any capacity. So this is just my advice to you about how I handle it. So I have days where I'm hungry and I feed myself when I'm hungry. I'm not depriving myself of anything because I don't want to, I want this diet to be effortless for me and not a burden. And I think it's a burden if I'm starving myself. I'm just listening, like, when am I hungry? And then I'm gonna respond to that instead of I have to go, ooh, three more hours until I can eat, even though I'm really starving right now. 
don't do that to yourself. You're just in the, if you're just beginning carnivore, you need to really just let your body get adjusted to eating this high fat diet, the protein diet. Make sure you're giving yourself the time to adjust to it because I think you're going to fall off of carnivore, or at least that's what I've been observing on just reading people's comments about how they couldn't, they couldn't stick on the diet or whatever. I don't even think of it as a diet. I do think of it as a way of eating. And the fact that there's just so many benefits for me. I think even if I didn't lose any weight, I would still keep eating this way. But I've only had a stall for two weeks. And during that time, I cheated and had carbohydrates. So it's not like... I didn't expect to have major weight loss. But the weird thing is, even though I haven't budged on the scale, um, my body fat has not increased or anything. But what is happening is I'm actually still shrinking. I don't understand how, I actually lost a whole inch off of my waist during that time. So even though I'm looking at a number on a scale, the smallest pants that I have right now are now big in the waist. And I, that just like, how does that happen? I don't even know. So um, I would say don't pay attention to other people's weight loss journey. Listen to your body and what it's telling you. So don't feel that you immediately have to go to fasting, give your body a chance to adjust to it and then think about, you know, what are your goals? Do you feel satiated when you're eating? Are you not eating enough? That thing. So, okay, I'm going to take a quick break and I'm going to tell you something about my dinner last night. So I will be back. Hi everybody, this is PK Anderson. Thanks for sticking with me through the break. You may have noticed that I'm sort of at a different, and you can see the pile of boxes behind me because I do an online business and I am overrun with boxes right now. And I also need to flip that furniture around. But as I said, I'm practicing on, I'm practicing and studying for a major test, which I am dealing with books, workbooks, online course, flashcards. Here's my little, as I go through my content, I'm creating flashcards. And then I even have a pocket app on my phone to be able to study for all of that stuff. So organizing my shelves or doing whatever is the last thing that I'm going to be doing right now. So I just have to shield my eyes and pretend like it's not there, but it is there. So you have to just let it go. Anyway, so last night, um, one of the rare times that my husband actually cooked dinner, I got home about 4.30 and he had a tri-tip coming out of the oven, which I don't know if I've mentioned this to you, but tri-tip is like one of my favorite ways to eat beef. I like a ribeye steak if I go to a steakhouse, but I haven't figured out how to cook it the right way myself. So I generally don't enjoy steak that I have cooked. I don't like it super rare. I like it kind of just pinky inside, but I don't want it too dried out. And I end up drying out my steak. So <sighs> tri-tip for me seems to work the best because you cook it in a really hot oven for a shorter period of time. It gets a nice crust on the outside and it's still the perfect doneness inside. Well... It's a one pound tri-tip and I try to eat about one pound of beef a day or, or protein, I guess. Generally, it turns out to be beef because I eat mostly ground beef, but my husband's cooking it up or cooked it and he pulled it out of the oven, slicing it up for us to eat and he's dishing it up for me as I walk up and he's just putting two slices of this tri-tip on his plate and he had two slices on his and I'm like uh you have to give me half of that because that's all I'm eating I'm gonna need more than just those two slices of tri-tip and he's just like you eat that much meat I'm like that's all I eat <laughs> I don't have all the side dishes I'm not gonna sit and snack all night long I'm not even gonna have a snack actually so I need a half a pound of beef you know that's it just give me half of it and I'm good to go. And he just didn't 
understand it, even though we've been eating that way whenever I cook, he just doesn't even realize that I actually cook two tri-tips. So one that we split for the dinner and one that I split into two meals for the next day. And he's been oblivious to that. He, I guess he thought that we were only eating one tri-tip over four meals, which I guess the meat miraculously generated or something like that. But I don't eat carnivore with the tri-tip because I really love a horseradish sauce. So what I do is a little bit of uh, sour cream with a creamy horseradish added to it, which is just, you know, pulverized horseradish. So I am deviating there as well. And I find that I kind of do that. I think I'm actually more ketovore because I've eaten car car or ke keto for so long in my life. I just tend to just gravitate towards that. The other thing is, is I still have not relinquished my obsession with these um, beef gelatin and pork rind pancakes. I mean, honestly, I could eat those. I think every meal. <laughs> I don't know why I love them so much. They are so good. But then I was thinking, I was talking to somebody from back in my days in college, I had two meals that I survived on when I was super poor and I would be living like barely existing paycheck to paycheck when I was first, because I worked my way through college. So I had like a lot of, well, no money basically. <laughs> So what I would do is um, one of my meals was I would stir up any vegetables that I could get my hands on, mostly carrots and broccoli, and then I'd pan fry up ramen noodles with those. And then the other meal that I consistently, and I mean, I could go a whole week eating it as my dinner every night, depending on how broke I was, I would live on pancakes. And I think that's, I think that's it. That's my comfort food is a pancake. So... I'm actually making my carnivore pancakes into waffles because I have my little skull waffle and it makes me so happy to eat it. But that's what I'm doing every, if it's just me for dinner, that's what I'm eating. You can hear coops in the background. Um, so I would tell you, if there is a comfort meal like that for you, make it in a large batch and freeze it. Because I am, whenever I make those carnivore waffles, I actually do a double batch and then I freeze two waffles in packets. And so I put them in little baggy, two waffles, and then inside of a big ba freezer bag, I keep them in there. And then it's just a grab and go, grab two out, pop them in the microwave for a minute and I have piping hot pancakes and they're delicious still. And the only thing that I do to deviate from the recipe that um, the keto guy did, which I posted on the webpage, the recipe, I'll have to search it out. I think it's like simply keto or something like that. Anyway, the only thing I deviate is I put a full teaspoon of cinnamon in my pancakes. I like a cinnamony more cinnamony pancake. And so I was I was realizing just how many meals because my husband happened to be working extended night shifts and so I was working so late I was getting home so late I just wanted to eat immediately. And in fact, I didn't even cook up any of my emergency bacon or anything. I just lived on those waffles because I had done a double batch and didn't eat any, so I put away so many. I was almost able to eat waffles every night for dinner. And in fact, yesterday I had two waffles for my lunch at work because I didn't have anything prepped. So I just put some butter on the waffles, cooked them in my Hot Logic mini oven the whole day or the whole morning and then pulled them out when they're piping hot. And I put like that mixture of either I'll put syrup, which I did on this time, or I'll do a mixture of monk fruit and cinnamon to maybe like a cinnamon sugar and just sprinkle a little bit on top of my pancakes. But um, note to everybody, if you're going to bring syrup to put on your pancakes at work, make sure it's in a sealed container. I had those little plastic dressing containers that I was using for it and I put it inside the container I was going to cook it in, but the lid was on, so I didn't even think anything bad, and it spilled syrup all over the bottom of my backpack, so bummer. 
Now I smell like maple syrup when I walk to and from work, but still was worth it for those carnivore pancakes. So I am doing, today is a Friday, so I'm outside of my norm, so I won't be measuring until tomorrow. And I still haven't actually measured since I got sick. I said I was going to measure last week and I didn't, just because I was still battling with the carbs and stuff. So hopefully this time around, I'm going to be <sighs> grounded, other than I did measure my waist because I was curious why my pants were all so loose on my waist. And so now I'm worried because I had just three pairs of the smaller size pants that I bought. Am I already going to have to buy an even si smaller size in preparation of not being able to hold those up? So we'll see. Anyway, thanks for joining me. This is my podcast. I put the carny in carnivore and I hope that you've discovered the carnivore diet and are thinking about doing it because as I say, this is just so simple for me to do. I don't crave sugar anymore. I just feel so good. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to tell you is because my next goal is to get rid of, get off of the blood pressure medication, I actually bought myself a blood pressure checking device, you know, the armband with the little thing, and I'm going to start taking my blood pressure and keeping note of it so that when I do go to the doctor, I can talk to her if it's low enough that maybe I can either step down a pill, because I take two a day, can I take just one pill a day, or maybe I can just do away with it, because I don't want to keep taking blood pressure medicine if I don't need to. So that's my next goal. I'll let you know how that goes. Anyway, thanks for listening.